Okay, in this recording we're going to have a look at something called UML diagrams. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. And what these are, they are diagrams which represent or they model your system. It's like a model of your system which you're creating and it makes it easy for other people, other developers, architects to look at that diagram understand what all the pieces are and so in our example it'll be understanding what all the different classes are in a design pattern and what the relationship is between those pieces. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. The reason why I think this will be a good part to drop this into our course is because it will help us to visualise our design patterns as we're creating them. Design patterns can get quite complex, you just end up with a lot of files here, there and everywhere when you actually implement them into your system. So it's really helpful if you can actually have a diagram and you can actually look at the classes and how they all fit together. Let's use dependency injection as our first example because this was fairly straightforward. It was really just two classes. We had our file writer which we injected into the constructor of the random processor and then the processor was able to use that rather than instantiate it in its own class. So two classes, however we did extend the far writer with a couple of other classes so it now starts getting a bit harder to visualize our system if we go and have a look at our files and where they all live basically we've just got a folder full of all various different classes because we've also added other code since then and so an easier way for us to be able to look at this would be to have a diagram and here's one I prepared earlier I hope you'll agree that this is a much easier way of visualizing our system. Each of the boxes represents a class or a type of class. So as you can see, we have our random processor. And then in the top little box there, you have the file writer, which is the property. And then in the box below that, we have our methods. So two methods, construct and process. And the little pluses and the little negative signs Plus means that it's a public method or a public attribute and a negative means that it's a private attribute. And sometimes if you're using protected, uh, you'll use a hashtag for that. Then to the left of that, we see the file writer. Notice I've used italics because it's an abstract class and that's sometimes a standard which is used to represent abstract classes. Again, we have the name of the method and the little plus sign there next to it to say that it is public. And you'll notice I've added the little dotted line between the random processor and the file writer to say that the random processor uses a file writer. The file writer is injected through the constructor. And then scrolling down, we see we have the CSV file writer and the JSON file writer, which extend the file writer abstract class. Being able to design systems and explain that design to others is something that you'll have to do as a programmer. It's not all about writing code. So why not take this opportunity to have a go at creating your own UML diagram using the adapter pattern. The reason why I'm choosing the adapter pattern is I think it'll be a good one because in there we have some inheritance, we have some composition, some abstraction. So we're using a variety of um, ways of representing things and relationships. You don't need to use any of the online tools or anything like that if you've never used them before and you're not comfortable. Just simply a pen and paper, have a look at the classes, how they all fit together. Let's quickly have a walk through this together and see how it all fits together. So the best place to start would be the new file writer adapter because that's central to everything. That extends the file writer. So visually I would place file writer above the new file writer adapter. Injected into the constructor, we have the new file writer. So that's more like a sideways thing. You'd have the new file writer and the adapter at the same level. New file writer is an interface and that is being implemented by new CSV file writer. So typically you would place the new CSV file writer below the new file writer and have an arrow to show that you are implementing that class or that interface. So pause it if you like and give it a go. I'll show you how I would put this together. Basically, the first thing that I do is I just get all my pieces uh, onto the page without actually showing the relationship between them. I'm just thinking, 
what are my main parts, throw them on the page and then figure out the relationship between each other. At the bottom of this left hand panel there's a lot of pieces related to UML so I can go and grab a little class box like this and I'll use that for my new file writer adapter. I'm not going to fill in any of the attributes just yet, I'm just going to get all my pieces on the page. And so that extends the file writer as in our original file writer. And so because I'm extending that, I'll put that above my adapter. And I'm just going to um, italicize the name here just to show that it's abstract. Okay, next we need our new file writer, which was an interface. And we're using composition here, we're injecting that into the new file writer adapter constructor. And so because we're doing that, I think it's good to have it sort of roughly placed around the same level so that we can show that it's actually being used rather than or instead of being extended or implemented. And then below that, I'm going to place our new CSV file writer because that is implementing the interface. And if you're implementing an interface, I think it just shows that relationship well if you have the, the class that you're implementing placed above that. And so I've zoomed through this a bit. Here is my final product. As you can see, file writer at the top, I'm extending that with the adapter. We're using composition, and so the file writer adapter is made up of the new file writer, and that is what it's going to write to our files now, but our adapter is wrapping around that. And so our new CSV file writer implements the new file writer interface, and that is our class which does the actual work of writing to the file. Okay, so I think something important to bear in mind here is that we're not professional diagram makers, we're programmers, or at least I'm not a professional diagram maker. And so my goal here is to just get the information across in the way that another developer can come along, look at that, and understand what all the pieces are, what the relationship is between those pieces. And that is really it. That, as far as the developer is concerned, that is the goal of your UML diagram. Get the information across, make your system easy to understand for another developer. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new recordings every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage.